Hello, my name is Dr. Stephen Bloomworth, and welcome to Natural Health Today. Uh, our show hasn't been uh, uh, taped for a while, so I'm going to do sort of a re-intro uh, about what our show is about and a little bit about me. Um, our show basically involves you, your questions, your concerns, uh, things you'd like to know about health, pains you maybe have and you'd like to have some uh, hands-on technique to maybe help yourself at home or know better where to, where to turn to. Uh, and we're, we're going to talk about that today, but I thought I'd introduce myself uh, so you know better, a little bit better where I come from and what I mean by natural health. Um, to me, natural health uh, there's so many different definitions. You can look up many different practitioners uh, on the internet these days or talk to other people and you'll come up with, you know, at least a half a dozen different definitions. My own particular definition is natural health tries to avoid using drugs and tries to avoid using surgery to help people. That doesn't mean we don't believe in them. We just say that uh, let's use drugs and let's use surgery uh, as a last resort uh, because once you cut something or once you give a person too many drugs it, it's tough to go back over that bridge so we don't claim to uh, help everything um, and as most people w will know I'm a chiropractor so they may think that I only work on backs but the truth is we work on many different conditions backs, necks, shoulders, feet, knees uh, every joint in the body we work on. When we uh, try to help people, we use a variety of different techniques. Uh, sometimes we do manipulation by hand, trying to put a bone that's uh, stuck back into motion. Other times we'll do work on muscles that might have trigger points or, shore, uh, or sore spots. Many, many times we uh, treat people with special exercises, and they're the type of exercises you're not going to see for the most part at the usual uh, physical therapist's office or online or even at your medical doctor's office. So we give very unique uh, exercises that depend upon the person's particular condition. We use nutrition. <clears throat> Many people can be helped uh, quite a bit by uh, either changing their diet, modifying it, or sometimes through nutritional supplements. We also guide people who uh, may have uh, diabetes because there is no necessary cure for diabetes, but if you know better how to handle it, you can avoid taking the drugs that are uh, associated with taking uh, with diabetes, like metformin and uh, sometimes insulin. Sometimes those can be avoided if you eat in a certain manner and avoid certain foods. Uh, so myself, I'm 72 years old. I graduated Northeastern University in 1973. And back at that time, I couldn't find a job doing anything except working at a leather factory in downtown Peabody, where there were many le leather factories at the time. I used to pick up between 10 and 12,000 pounds of leather every day on a piecework basis, so it was very fast, it was very physical, and after a few years of doing that, I hurt my back. <clears throat> so I went to the local hospital, because that, that's what the sign on the wall at the leather factory that I worked at uh, informed me to do. I went to the local hospital and they took my temperature and my pulse and said, well, you need to see an orthopedic surgeon. Later that afternoon, I saw an orthopedic surgeon and his entire exam was, bend over and try to touch your toes. Oh, that hurts? Well, take these pills for the next three weeks and lay down. And uh, I did that. And uh, it took me a long time to feel better. In fact, over time, I t tended to feel worse and worse and worse. But after three weeks, I dutifully went back to work and on my way to work, I passed by a chiropractor's office. I had no idea what chiropractors do, but I knew that the hospital hadn't helped and the orthopedic surgeon hadn't helped. And so I wrote down the phone number and I called uh, the phone number and I saw the fellow who was a chiropractor and he spent much more time with me. He took an x-ray of my back and found that I have a little defect in my back where I actually have one extra vertebrae down in the low part of my back means my back can be a little bit unstable. Uh, he was able to treat me that afternoon by moving some of the joints that were stuck I, and I immediately started to feel better. 
Of course, I was still working at the leather factory, so I, ha I was picking up still 10 to 12,000 pounds of leather every day, but through uh, the chiropractic care that I uh, received, I was able to get over that pain and go back to working as normally as a 24, 25 year old would because I'd been at the leather factory for a few years. I started to think, what, what helped me? Well, what helped me was this person's knowledge and his hands-on uh, ex experience to treating me. And I said, you know, I think I'd like to do that myself. So I went back to school. I found that my BA degree hadn't given me enough science. So I, I had to go back for many years to get my science prereqs. The bottom line is I graduated uh, chiropractic college in 19... Uh, 82 and I've been a practicing uh, practitioner since that time so I've been in practice for 41 years every single thing that uh, I treat and see in my patients I have had wrong with me I'm a tennis player softball player runner bicyclist <clears throat> I have had virtually every injury pain and experience that most of my patients have so I use what I've learned at b being a patient to help my patients. So I practice what I preach and uh, part of what I know is through book learning and part of what I know is through 41 years of uh, practical experience. So what I'm going to do is read off a few things that patients ask me uh, on a pretty regular basis and uh, at the very end we'll leave some information so that you can uh, call uh, my office or you can send an email or you can even write an old-fashioned snail mail letter if you're so inclined. So I'm going to put on my glasses <coughs> and see what I remember people asking me. Okay. Uh, okay. One thing that people sometimes ask me about was uh, I thought chiropractors just take care of backs but you take care of knees and shoulders too? Well, yes we do. Um, when I first had my own personal injury, I remember going in there for back pain, but at a certain point in time, I had also injured my neck in a car accident. I didn't know that chiropractors would also take care of necks. I thought they just took care of backs. So I was uh, surprised to find that yes, we take care of necks. Later on, when I was in chiropractic college, we learned about taking care of every joint in the body because the word chiropractor doesn't mean back doctor. The word chiro is a, uh, comes from the Greek word chiro, which means hands. All it means is we use our hands to take care of people. So we're not using knives, drugs, uh, surgery to help people. We're using our hands and what we have learned about how the human body and the joints are supposed to move and how the muscles are supposed to function and where muscles tend to get problems and where they tend to get trigger points. So do we take care of shoulders? Yes, we do. Do we take care of knees? Yes, we do. Do you always have to go to an orthopedic surgeon if you have a shoulder problem or a knee problem or a foot problem? No, you don't. Sometimes you do if you have a fracture, but many uh, non-back, what we call extremity-related problems, can be taken care of via uh, chiropractic care, which usually combines some degree of uh, hands-on joint freeing up, sometimes involves working on muscle trigger points, and almost always involves some type of exercises to strengthen muscles that are weak. Uh, a little footnote that I'd offer here uh, about those of you who are fond of exercise, particularly those people who say, oh, I love stretching, I love stretching. People whose entire uh, exercise program consists of stretching are doomed to having their problem come back because you can a, a problem that is people think they're helping with stretching can be helped even more so by strengthening an opposite group. So if you feel say say some tightness on one side of your shoulder and you find that stretching it helps, it can be helped even more by strengthening the weak aspects that support the shoulder. So um, what we do encompasses many different fields 
and part of the biggest part of our job is probably education and letting people know some of the things that they've uh, learned are uh, should we say urban myths uh, well here's a question <clears throat> it says my feet are bothering me every time I walk for more than a few minutes is that arthritis or old age well it depends on the individual as we get older yes virtually everybody will develop arthritis in some of their joints and I have seen it in people as young as 20 years old and obviously I've seen it in people who are my age and, and far older. How can you tell if something is arthritis? Um, here's one way arthritis almost always feels worse in the morning because you're not moving and it gets better during the day when you move a bunch and then may hurt at the tail end of the day when you've perhaps moved too much. But with regard to the feet, if you walk for a while and you start to develop pain in your feet, you might have a simple problem with a fancy name. It's called plantar fasciitis. Plantar is just a fancy word for the bottom of your foot. Uh, fascia is a fancy word for the connective tissues that run along the bottom of your feet. Uh, one of the most common uh, scenarios in people who have uh, pain in their feet after walking for a while is they may have flat feet. Y you know, that's a term we hear all the time. Do we know what it means? No, because that's not a term that I use. I n never use the term flat feet uh, when I'm talking to anybody uh, technically. <clears throat> what happens in the foot is there's supposed to be an arch, and it, the arch might look like this, like a little um, cave like that. And ordinarily, your plantar fascia runs from one side of the arch to the other. Well, people with flat feet, imagine that, that that arch doesn't exist. It's flat like that. So the bottom of the foot, the, the, that fascia, that connective tissue that goes from one uh, end of your foot to the other, gets overly stretched. So the stretching that I mentioned a moment ago as being not helpful, if people just do some of these stretches, what you've probably seen runners do, where they have one hand on the wall and they have their foot behind them and they're stretching out. Sometimes it stretches their calf, sometimes it stretches um, the tissues on the bottom of their feet. That doesn't really help. It doesn't really help if you have a flat foot. If you have a flat foot, there's nothing you can do except have a proper arch support made from an impression of your foot to give you the arch while you're wearing that device. Uh, you can call it an insole if you like. We tend to use the, the word orthotic. You don't have to call it anything, but it's a support made from an imp impression of your foot to give you an arch while you're running or walking. Now, when you take it out, yes, when you take it out, your foot is just as flat as can be. But for those people who want to walk distances or run or play sports where they're pounding a lot on their feet, they should probably be in that type of uh, arch support every time that they're playing that sport or walking any distance. Um, many people think they're going to fix the problem by going to their podiatrist and getting a shot of cortisone into that area. And sometimes people will feel great. They will feel the relief of having the cortisone decrease the inflammation in the area. The, the unfortunate thing is that cortisone is a bit like when the dentist gives you a shot of Novocaine before he's going to work on your tooth. When the dentist go, gives you a shot of no, Novocaine before he works on your tooth, that's in preparation for doing something to your tooth that will take out the cavity, will take out the pro problem that's giving you the, the pain in the foot. Nothing could be further uh, from the truth when you give a shot of cortisone uh, into a person's uh, foot who has plantar fasciitis. It's not changing anything. They're not taking out anything that's bad. They're not changing it from being <clears throat> bad tissue to good tissue. It's just tissue that's no longer hurting, so you think the problem has gone away. As long as you have uh, a flat foot, as long as you have that fallen arch, that will come back and come back. How long does it take? Everybody's going to be uh, different. But I, uh, I even had cortisone myself many years ago when I was running seven days a week. 
And a friend of mine was a podiatrist, volunteered to give me a shot. I got the shot. And uh, three days later, when I was running down to first base, playing softball on Sunday, pain was right back. So uh, a short-term a short, short term solution, like a cortisone shot in the foot, is really not a long-term fix. A lot of people say, well, why are my feet hurting now? Because I'm 40, 50 years old, and they didn't when I was younger. Did, did my arch just suddenly fall <clears throat> when I got to be 40 or 50, 60 years old? No, it was that way ever since you were two. But you were blessed with youth and, shall we say, uh, accommodating mechanisms where your feet did not hurt you because you had other things in your body that made up for that. But as we get older, sometimes we uh, lose our resilience, we, lo we lose our ability to self-heal, and then we start to have pain from doing activities that we thought, well, I've never had a problem with this before, and why is it plaguing me now? And <clears throat> having flat feet, having plantar fasciitis can be one of those problems. Okay, I'm going to uh, read another question I see very frequently about people who ha will have some uh, what they call acid indi indigestion in their stomach, and they'll say that they're taking an antacid like Tums, you know, something that uh, that dissolves in their mouth and uh, decreases the stomach acid. And other people will uh, th take things like uh, Prilosec. There's many different uh, names for these uh, drugs. What they're all attempting to do is decrease your stomach acid because it, it seems sensible uh, if you're feeling like an acid feeling in your stomach after you eat that you must have too much stomach acid in the, there because that acid feeling, it, it feels like that's uh, what the problem is. And that can be the truth for a minority of people. But many people, as we get older into our 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond, <clears throat> the sad fact of the matter is our stomach doesn't make enough acid, which is called hydrochloric acid. It's something that helps break down your food and kill the bacteria that may be remaining in your food when you eat it. So uh, that food is digested quickly and quickly passes through your stomach into your small intestine. But as we get older, if we're making less stomach acid, that food will sit there and rather than being broken down and digested and passing out quickly, will kind of sit there. So people uh, who have a large meal sometimes overindulge and feel bloated and then later get that gassy acid feeling. Uh, do search for relief by taking some type of uh, pill that has some uh, antacid in it. But they may not be really addressing the heart of the problem. The, the heart of the problem could be, and is for many people, that they have too little stomach acid. That stomach acid is not bad. It's good for several reasons. One, it helps break down your proteins, which you need to absorb. It helps make calcium be absorbed later on down in your uh, intestines. And it also helps for you to activate something called intrinsic factor. Intrinsic factor is a molecule that down <coughs> in your small intestine allows you to absorb a very important vitamin called vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 is something that helps you uh, make red blood cells. It also helps make the little sheath that runs around each nerve that helps keep your nerves healthy. You will absorb less vitamin B12 if you don't have enough stomach acid. And by taking the pills that e either decrease the amount of stomach acid that <clears throat> your stomach makes or that neutralize the acid by taking a pill that dissolves and, and um, blankets out your stomach acid, you're not going to be able to properly digest proteins, properly uh, earmark calcium to be absorbed later on and you're not going to be able to make intrinsic factor which helps you absorb vitamin B12. So what's the solution? 
Well, a simple solution that we try with our patients, we give them a little supplement that actually has a small amount of stomach acid in the pill and you take it with your meal. And if you find that you do better taking a little a bit of this stomach acid, the hydrochloric acid uh, supplement called betaine hydrochloride, if you take that with your meal and you feel better and you notice that you have less gas, less bloating, and less acidic feeling in your stomach, you know that the problem wasn't too much hydrochloric acid, it was too little. And this is particularly true of people as they get older. It's a pretty simple thing to try. <clears throat> it either works or it doesn't work. It, it's not like a long-term thing. You have to see that it works. The only thing you have to see is how much do you eat, uh, need. If a person has a, a normal uh, meal, they may need uh, one or, or two of these uh, supplement pills. If, you, if you're eating all day, like um, at Thanksgiving dinner, and you're really uh, loading down your stomach, there's going to be a lot of load in there for you to try to digest. So you may need to take something before a big Thanksgiving dinner, during, and maybe some after. But it's, it's simple enough. It, it uh, works with many people. Uh, it won't hurt you. It'll either work or it won't work, but it'll allow you to better digest your food, correct the situation, because the antacids uh, work against your health. And those that shut off the um, mechanisms that make stomach acid inside your stomach also decrease the amount uh, of work that your, your lungs do of expelling uh, particulate matter that we take in all day long as we breathe. We're, we're taking in dust, things like that. We have little hair cells inside our lungs that beat and they push like this and they push matters that need to come back out through our sputum to be spat out. It, it pushes them always up and out of your lungs. Well, the uh, proton pump inhibitors that work on your stomach also work on the proton pump inhibitors that make that little hair cell beat like this to help you uh, clear your lung fields. And they are both inhibited by taking that uh, Prilosec that I just mentioned. It's not bad to take it for a week or two, but taking it long term, you can have lung problems from that. As well as you won't absorb as much calcium as you need to absorb. So those are some of the ways that we help our patients. We also help our patients who are in automobile accidents. Say we had a patient come in recently. She got into a car accident last Friday. Didn't feel that bad on Friday because she was kind of shaken up at the time and upset because her truck got halfway tipped over before it righted itself. So she was hit, hit pretty heavily. Didn't feel that bad, but on the following day, she started to feel worse. And what she found out is a common finding is if you're in an auto accident and it's not so serious where you actually go through the windshield or break a, a bone, you may not feel that much pain at the time. It may be on succeeding days where you feel pain. So sometimes people poo-poo people who have whiplash and are involved in an auto accident because they don't see a wound. They don't see blood unless it's a terribly severe accident. And they will think little of these people's problems until they have them themselves. I've been in a car accident, didn't feel that bad. Uh, the first day, the next day, I felt a little bit bad. Two days afterwards, I feel like I'd really been warped. I had pain in the back of my neck. So we see people af after car accidents, and we treat them <clears throat> gently to restore the motion in the neck that's lost, and we do give them exercises and hands-on treatment of their sore muscles. And we help guide them to, to know that getting over a car accident can sometimes take quite a long time. It takes a short amount of time to, for the injury to occur, but it can take a long time because the acceleration that's involved in a car accident is much greater than any of us would ever imagine. When they've done studies on, uh, on dummies in cars and ex expose them to just a, a 10 mile an hour crash from the rear, they're shocked at how quickly uh, they accelerate to two and three times uh, 
a two or three g-force, which is a measure of how the amount of gravity we, we have. And that uh, <coughs> sharp uh, g-force uh, increase puts a, quite a strain on you. So that type of treatment uh, we also do with people, and we try to guide them and educate them to let them know, okay, you were slightly injured at the time, but you may have these ongoing problems for a little while afterwards. And uh, we're coming down to the end of <coughs> the amount of material that I have prepared for the day, so I'd uh, like to quickly remind you of who I am. I'm Dr. Stephen Bloomer, and I were, you're watching today Natural Health Today, and it's a show dedicated to your problems, uh, things that you uh, have questions on, and we provide several different ways of you getting in touch with us. You can always give an old-fashioned call to our phone number. It's 978-535-6155. <clears throat> you can send an email to uh, pbdchiropractic at gmail.com. And you can uh, snail mail uh, us a letter to our um, street address, which is 215 Newbury Street, Suite 102, Peabody, Massachusetts, 01960. But whichever way you contact us, uh, you can just contact us and we can give you the information back directly. We don't necessarily have to use your questions on the show, but we can if you like. We uh, won't give out your name because sometimes questions can be um, a little bit sensitive, so we don't give out your name. If you'd like to participate in the show, fine. If you'd just like some uh, information directly when you call us or contact us, that's fine as well. But uh, I want to thank you for watching Natural Health Today. It's been a while since we've made a show, but uh, I hope you'll enjoy what you see and I uh, hope you might have learned a little bit and we'll try to go over things and show you a few more things in uh, weeks to come. Thanks for watching.